Look, you act like you haven't seen anybody since last week. Bless the Lord. So let's get into our lesson for this morning. The, 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 the E word title is Can You Handle the Truth? <laughs> uh, and uh, when I was uh, considering this subject matter, I'm telling you, honest to goodness, first thing that jumped in my head when I heard the subject matter about speaking the truth in love is what's which is what the heart of the message is all about. So when I heard that, the first thing I, I thought about was that movie, A Few Good Men. I don't know how many of you ever. So, oh, you saw that? You saw that? A Few Good Men. What was that guy's name? I know Jack Nicholson was the other guy. The what? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholas. They were having their little to do and this and that and the other. And so... Uh, I, I went on, the, on YouTube and looked there and looked it up and all that. And uh, I found a clip from that movie which helps emphasize the point of what I want to get to you this morning. And, of course, when I first turned on the clip, they got some heavy cuss words in there and all that kind of thing. But when, anybody here never heard a cuss word? Oh, nobody has any of you in here heard a cuss word? Wave real big. You heard a cuss word, yeah? All right, all right. All right. Any of you all ever used? Oh, oh, all right, all right. Oh no. <laughs> ah! Okay, look at him over there. Yeah. <laughs> At any rate, we tried to we tried to mute it out. Okay. But I want you to move by that and listen to the emphasis on both sides of the situation. On one side of the situation, this young whippersnapper dude is going on. He wants to, this and that. And this older guy who's been around and has to do what he has to do, he tell you, you can't handle the truth. Hmm? And then he went on to tell him some things about what it is that when people are in charge, there's things that you just have to do. Like it or not. And then see, this one of these big things about, uh, for me personally, where I have this attitude about how we deal with first responders and people in the military and things of that nature because uh, some guys that are in charge, when they're in a war, they have to send people out. And they know that when they send those people out there, they're going to die. Remember me doing my stuff about saving Private Ryan and all this other kind of thing? You have to learn to obey. You have to do what your commanding officer tells you to do because if you don't, everybody on the boat will die. Huh? And so you had me, you heard me put this little umph in here about young people being obedient and things of that nature. You got to learn to obey. You know, you got all this, well, the laws are this and all that. Hey, bottom line is you need to obey. Because if you don't, a whole bunch of people will die. Hmm? So anyway, 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 anyway. Got this little clip here. I want you to listen to the clip. You got, is it ready? Got the clip ready? I want you to listen to this little clip, and then I'll come back and share some more with you in this message for today. Can you handle the truth? Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody breathe, breathe. Uh, whew, whew. And this, that, this, that. Okay. Now, uh, again, before we get into the scripture part of the message... One of the things I wanted you to notice in this uh, exchange here is that you've got two different kinds of situations going on. One, like I said before, you got this young officer guy who's never been into battle, who doesn't know what it's like to have your life out there on the line, but he has a responsibility to deal with a situation that happened in, in, in connection with this guy's order and things of that nature. So then he pushes the issue, pushes it through, and then uh, the Colonel Jessup, I guess it's, that was what his name, uh, he told him, you can't handle the truth. 
And one of the places in there he said, you sleep in a blank, under a blanket because people like me provide opportunity for you to sleep under that blanket and be secure. And instead of saying thank you, you want to have a challenge about the methods that I use to keep you safe and keep you secure. And that's the, the, you heard him say, we follow orders, we do what we're told because I put my life in your hands, you put your life in my hands, and we have to do what we have to do in order to have our country still be made safe. And so part of the push that I want to do in an underlying way throughout this message here is for us to recognize and for us to realize we sit here in this country in a place of security, in a place of peace because other people that we don't even know are willing to put their life and put and have put and have paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we can have the peace that we have. That's why I'm strong in supporting the U.S. military, first responders, fire department, police officers, whatever the case may be, because they walk out of their door every morning, not knowing whether they're going to come back or not. There are people flying the skies right now, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sailing under the ocean right now. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in order that we can stay secure. Amen. And it's kind of like, hey, uh, we should be able to say thank you. <laughs> Veterans Day is coming up. And uh, some of us here, some of us here have served in the military. And consequently, I don't care what the social climate is. I don't care what the political climate is. I don't care what the economic climate is. Thank God for people who put their lives on the line every day in order that we can be secure. One of the, sometimes when I have one of my irrational moments when people are giving all kind of stuff to police officers and things like that, I, I say in my irrational moments, it would be something if every police officer stopped doing, every uh, first responder, if they stopped doing whatever they do, if they stopped it for 24 hours, it would be absolute chaos. Hmm? You think people breaking in folks' houses now <laughs> and they're on guard. Can you imagine what it would be like if we didn't have them at all? So anyway, all right, all right, all right. So let's get into, let's get into the session and the lesson for today. The big emphasis about this E-word message is can you handle the truth? We're doing some studies on Wednesday night in our Wednesday night word study, and you'd really be good to come, be blessed if you had an opportunity to do that. And we're talking about love, the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to be spending some time in that chapter over the next several weeks. And yet we come to this place where, in my introduction statement, it talks about speaking the truth in love is very necessary, but it has to be handled out of maturity and, of course, with an honest motive. Uh, in, this, in these lessons, uh, and then sometimes in conversation, you know, we look around and think about, do they teach us in school how to speak the truth in love? Do they really have classes on speaking the truth? And then, of course, here we have in Scripture a word from God that says that we ought to speak the truth in love. But it is one of the most difficult it's one of the most unusual. It is practically even dangerous for us to try to speak the truth in love. Two main reasons why. Number one, most people don't really understand love. So if you don't understand love, how are you going to speak the truth? A lot of people scared of the truth. And without love and without truth, you just got a mess going somewhere to happen. And so, consequently, in this lesson today, 
I want to highlight to us, first and foremost, as I said in the previous lesson, that it's really important for us to understand love. The scripture in the, in the, the gospel, the gospel going to John chapter 3, verse 16, says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's love. Say out loud, that's love. That's love. That's love. And of course, we get all engaged in all other kind of things that sound like love, things that are emotional love, brotherly love, sexual love, uh, uh, just uh, uh, every kind of love except God's kind of love. They call it in theology and scripture, they call it agape love. And it's amazing how we go through life dealing with situations where love is required and we don't know love. We know love when it's convenient. We know love when it's easy to do. But this kind of love that we're talking about here, when you speak the truth in love, first and foremost, it's important for us to accept and, and connect with the love that God has for us. You can say amen and breathe. Accept the love that God has for us. Another place in scripture that I don't have up in here, where it talks about Jesus said, Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this. That what will happen? He will do what? He, he will lay down his life for a friend. Huh? And then when we talk about love this or love that, when we talk about uh, this going on, that going on, uh, when we talk about how we deal with relationships with other people, one of the most important areas that we need to be in is the one that says we love like God loves. And one of the biggest scuffles in relationship, biggest scuffle in church issues is that people don't know how to forgive. Hmm? They forgive like how they feel. They forgive like what's, what's uh, I'll forgive you if you do thus and so and this and that. And, and then people have this, well, you have to forgive. I'm going to forgive you, but I won't forget it. I'm going to forgive you, but it's going to take me some time. I have to peel some layers off. I didn't see nothing in the scripture where Jesus said, well, Father, I'm hanging up here. Uh, uh, forgive them. Let me peel off a few la la layers, and then maybe next week I'll forgive them. Did Jesus say that? No. I can't hear you. No. He's... He, Hanging on the cross, they're killing him. They've lied on him. They've, they've put thorns on his head. They've beat him. And he said, Father, forgive them. Yes, but. No, I don't see no yes, but. He didn't say, Father, forgive them, but. Did he? I can't hear you. He didn't say, Father. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Now, if we accept that God's word is true, then we'll just do what the word of God said. We won't do it based on how we feel. I just don't feel like forgiving you or I'll forgive you now. But if you do it again, I'm going to I'm going to bop you upside the head. I'm going to do this and so and this and that. You would be amazed what happens in your life, our lives, when we just forgive and move on. Mm -hmm. But this world around us, oh, they want to do this. Well, you have to do that. I know what the Bible says, but as <sighs> soon as you start, I know what it says, but you start getting away from the power of God and the love of God. And therefore, now you got all now you got this big old wide door open for the devil to come along and do a bunch of stuff. To keep mess going on. Hmm? Now, I, 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 I think you know, but I'm going to say it again anyway. I'm just a stickler for God's word. I believe it has great power. I believe there's life in God's word. I believe when we do what God's word has to say, we find blessing, we find peace, we find wisdom, we find joy, we find understanding, we find his presence. But as soon as we only do a portion 
of what he said. We don't have opportunity to receive all that he has in store for us. So my challenge to you today is that uh, I'm, I'm going to put this information out here. But kind of like, like, I, like I said last week, don't run out of here now and you don't try to do what Pastor Scott said, doesn't so and this and that, and, and you're not really ready. Hmm? Because the first of that introduction says, love has to be handled out of maturity. Huh? Maturity. And I, I'm sad to say, a whole lot of people aren't mature enough Amen. to handle the truth. <laughs> And so I pray today as we go through these uh, scriptures that God will build in us an opportunity to develop our love to a place of maturity where we can then speak the truth in love with an honest motive. Hmm? So then let's look at let's look at the when, what and how of dealing with truth in love. First of all, think about it like this. Uh, 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 when you deal with when to speak the truth in love, the when to deal with the truth in love, like around the Scott family, uh, it's been a long uh, understood re recognition that you don't talk to the Scott family uh, about heavy things if they haven't eaten. You're cruising for a serious bruising when you deal with certain things on an empty stomach. So if you're going to deal with speaking the truth in love, you need to make a decision. Ask God to help you. When should I do this? Huh? Then, then when you're getting ready to deal with the truth in love, speak the truth in love, you need to decide what am I going to say? In relationship to this speaking the truth in love. When you deal with what you're going to say when you're speaking the truth in love, you need to deal with your own personal sense of motive. What am I going to say and why am I going to say it like this? Because if you, you know, you know as well as I know, you can say certain things in a certain way and you can rip another person apart. And it be true. Hmm? But is that your motive? Is that what you really want to do? Is that what God wants you to do? No. Rip the person to shred? Well, then when you decide what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. And, 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 and another thing just jumped up into my heart. This business about if you want to say something in such a way that that, that person, they'll never do this again. <laughs> you know. Is that how you approach things? Is that how God wants us to handle issues in life from the standpoint that we want people to be scared of us and they better know they better not do this anymore? Or should we do it in love? See? Okay, so then looking at the when, what, and how with the dealing of, of truth in love, how are you going to say it? And of course, uh, I can tell you up early here, that whenever you deal with truth, there's going to be some pain somewhere. Hmm? And when that pain comes, there's a couple different avenues that you can go on. One, you can allow the rejection from that other person to cause you to stop with the pursuit of truth and then just back off and let things go on like they go. Or you can press through with God's help. You can press through the rejection and keep finding the place where God wants to apply his love in order to bring the situation to a victorious conclusion. Hmm? So how? And, and of course, that's why I said this has to be dealt with with maturity and it has to be dealt with from an honest motive. In other words, if you, it's kind of like if you put it like this. When all is said and done, what... What, what do I believe that God wants the final result to be? And when we look at it from that standpoint, that means we need to be checking with God along the way as we deal with these truth situations as we speak them 
in love. Okay, time to get to our main scripture text. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse number 5. I'm using King James, of course, but uh, always take opportunity to look it up in different versions if you, if you can. Verse number five, it says, does not behave, love's talking about love. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Love, and I'm, I'm making this insertion, love seeketh not her own. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinketh no evil. Verse 6, love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. And so as I was preparing this, looking through there and thinking about different kinds of situations and scenarios, when you look at this place in, 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 in verse number 5, where it talks about love does not behave itself unseemingly. And when you get ready to deal with somebody in relationship to truth, and, it, and, it, and that truth is, it may be hurtful, that truth may be extreme, that truth may be strong. It says love does not behave itself unseemly. Now, 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 now watch this one right here. Because to me, to me, and you look it up for yourself, spend some time in prayer with God. To me, what that says is this, that when you're dealing with somebody in truth, and you're not going to behave yourself unseemingly if in the course of that discussion there comes an opportunity for you to cop an attitude. You'll pass it by. You'll say, ah, I'm, this, this getting, I'm getting ready to go off on this person. Say, going off is unseemly. Come on, come on. You, you, if, whether you believe it or not, I just appreciate you saying it. But going off is unseemly because look at what it opens up this back that fight fight back and then there you are you haven't really had opportunity to let love and truth accomplish what God wants done in the situation then it goes on to say seeketh love seeketh not her own who listen closely whose will do you want accomplished in the things that you do? God's will. God's will, not yours. Because a lot of us think our way is the best. Like me, I know I think my way is the best. But when you honestly, openly deal with God and make your connection with him, and when you engage yourself in understanding his love and you choose to function in the way he functions in love, that means you're not going to seek to have it be your way. You seek to want it to be God's way. And think about this other tough point right here. What does God want out of marriage? Go ahead, you can talk. You can talk. You can talk. What does God want out of marriage? Oh? Commitment. What does God want out of marriage? Love. What does God want? Out of marriage. Happiness. Happiness. What does God want out of marriage? Loyalty. Loyalty. God wants, listen, God wants peace in marriage. That's what he wants. So then, if you're going to have your way, then, and, that's, and that means, you know, you're not speaking, <laughs> he not speaking, they haven't Hissy fits. Is that peace? No. I can't hear you. No. Mm -hmm. God wants what in marriage? Peace. peace. Mm -hmm. So then, when we're functioning uh, our marriage in the way that God wants us to function, there will be peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. God's way will be our way. Psh, you can go three, four, five weeks and not speak. Our way, I'll throw the food up over here. Eat this, this food. I'll see you later. Hmm? That's not God's way. I said out loud, that's not God's way. And you, know what else, you know what else God wants out of marriage? He wants godly seed. Hmm? 
So when you cut sex off in marriage, you can't have no seed. <laughs> a lot of people use it as a big weapon, though. Psh, hey, you can't touch me. Psh, not, you ain't, not over here, not tonight. <laughs> and that could have been the night that God wanted a seed to come into the earth Amen. that's going to be a blessing to his kingdom. Yes. <laughs> Say this out loud. The Bible is the, Bible is the, word, of God. the word of God. The word of God, the word of God. Is, the of God. is the will of God. The will of God tells me God. what God wants me to do and when I do what God wants me to do, God blesses me. Okay, then. So here we go. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse five and six. Love, you know, that's the continuing of the chapter and the point of the subject of the matter. Love does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Evil thinking, evil is like, I want, I want you to get paid back for what you did to me. Hmm. Of course, I hear right away, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yes. I will repay. But if you're standing there making sure I want that, I want them to be sick. I want them to feel the pain that I feel. I want them to suffer like I've been suffering. Then maybe you'll understand. Hmm. Support text scripture <laughs> found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. And here's the crux for the statement of our can you handle the truth? It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in what? All One more time. In what? All, All things. things, which is the head, even Christ. Amen. So then. As we uh, look forward to making the opportunity to go forward and deal with people that need to be dealt with in love, dealing with them in truth, one of the things that we want to keep in mind is that we want to grow up into Christ in all things. We want to see how he handled what he handled in order for us to handle what we need to handle. And he is the head. He's the everything. Amen. He's what it's all about. Uh, okay. Uh, so speaking the truth in love may grow. Now the grow is reaching back to that maturity issue. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how many of us are mature enough right now to deal with truth in love. I already said uh, most people don't know what love is, and most people deal with love from the standpoint of their own personal feelings. But when you're moving in the things of God and God's kind of love, technically, how you feel about it doesn't matter. What God has to say about it, that's what matters. Amen. Now, yeah, you can feel like it or you can not feel like it. And if you don't feel like it, you don't have to do it. And God won't make you do it if you don't feel like it. But the deal is work on your feelings. Amen. To have your feelings be like God wants your feelings to be. Hmm? All right. So then, then we go. Uh, one more uh, scripture text here is in the gospel according to John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse 32. Verse 31 reads, then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, listen to this next phrase. If ye continue in my word, and I'm going to repeat it. If you continue in my word, I'll say it one more time. If you continue in my word, you are my, then, you, then are ye my disciples. Now, what's the flip flip of that? If you're not dealing in God's word, you're not his disciple. You're not being his student. Hmm? Uh, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples. If you don't continue in my word, you're going to be continuing in your feelings. Huh? 
And my feelings, I don't know about you, my feelings a lot of the time are different than what God's word is. Amen. So then, in this, this uh, concept, in this effort that we're talking about here, God to help us mature to the extent that we can deal with people in love, we can share with people in love, we can tell them the truth. And when we tell them the truth, life, relationship, situations will get better. As a matter of fact, verse number 32 of the gospel according to John chapter 8, the gospel according to John chapter 8, verse number 32, look at what it says. And ye shall know the truth. And then what happens after that? Read it. And the truth Say it one more time. And the Oh, one more time. Say it again. And the truth that's why it becomes necessary that when you start dealing with speaking truth in love, that your goal is freedom to come. God will bring freedom when we deal with truth in love. I said a little while ago, when you deal with choosing love, there's going to be some pain. Huh? And as you get to the place, as a congregation here, those of you watching, whatever, as we get to the place where we, we, we're willing to start dealing with choosing love, certainly the first and foremost thing we want to do is have God help us, guide us, and stay with us along the way. But you know what? When you deal with choosing and love, there's going to be some heavy pain. You know why? Because especially in marriages, especially in marriages, uh, because uh, I said, what does God want in marriage? He wants peace and these things and that, that. Well, what does the enemy want? The enemy wants in marriage destruction, confusion, anxiety, disappointment, all that kind of stuff. Hmm? And so we make a choice. When we speak the truth in love, freedom will be there. Amen. Now, i got to warn you. When you deal with truth and love, there's going to be pain. There's going to be pain. In the lesson of, uh, we're studying, he say like speaking the truth and love is like going through a dark tunnel. He saying sometimes the deeper you get in the tunnel, the darker it gets. And some people can't, they can't handle being in that kind of tunnel situation, so they stop. And they back out of the tunnel and they say, well, we'll just, you know, we'll just hold on till the children leave for school or we'll just hold on until that be the end of it. We won't we won't we won't advance. We won't get better. We'll just detente. We'll just sit here. If it doesn't get worse, fine. <laughs> if it doesn't get better, well, that's OK. Hmm? But down in that tunnel, you can have a train wreck. Huh? Because when you start to deal with truth, truth hurts. And truth causes emotional reactions to things and stuff. And the enemy does not want for there to be peace in your family, peace in your life. He doesn't want peace in your marriage. He doesn't want peace in your community. He wants to keep stuff in a mess. Hmm? And uh, I don't know. I don't say much I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong concern of mine as pastor of this congregation that there's a lot of enemy work going on against marriages in this particular congregation. Mm -hmm. It really is. And a lot of it is related to us scuffling and struggling about speaking the truth in love. But I'm praying to God in Jesus' name that we're turning the corner that God will help us as we stay in his word and follow the power and the pattern of love that's in his word that our marriages can turn around and can come to that place of peace. Because when we have peace in our marriages, our children are going to be better. When we have peace in our marriages, our job situations are going to be better. When we have peace 
in our marriages and relationships, our communities will be better. Our church will be better. And uh, yours truly, using my own personal example, we've had major challenge in our marriage. Wow. The devil is kind of like, let me knock you out now. Hmm? Because when I knock you out, then all of the thousands of people that you've had relationship with over the years of your ministry, they'll be able to say, see there, I told you so. Huh? And we went down into the tunnel. <laughs> and we had a train wreck. We really did. And, uh, and I believe that the power of God, his word, and his love is the only thing that will save us. That's me and Mrs. Scott. And the reason I'm saying that to you is I want to tell you truly the real thing that will save your marriage and your relationship is God and his love. It's God and his love. And God is calling us into personal individual relationship with him so that he stirs up on the inside of us his love to the extent that we will cause our emotions to settle down and function in the love of God and not function based on emotions. Hmm? Now, marriage, yes, then also family, whether you're married or not. I'm telling you, we need the love of God to help us. <laughs> we don't need a new president. <laughs> we don't need a new governor. We don't need a new mayor. We need God. I can't hear you say that. We need God to infuse our lives with his love so that when stuff comes up, we won't let the stuff push us off of the word of God. Amen. We'll stand even deeper and stronger in God's love. The more the mess, uh, the more the mess rides up, the deeper we stand in the word of God. Uh, who is that? Who is that? Oh, I think Gloria Copeland said one time to Kenneth Copeland, they were having something going on and he was being all fussy and this and that. And he'd come back from a meeting or something, something, something. And she said to him, she, she, either she grabbed him in the shirt collar or something, and she said, I don't care what you do. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to love you. <laughs> hmm? I'm going to love you. <laughs> now, I'm away from the Copeland situation. I'm telling you, you can look at a person right in the face and say, I know you lied, but I'm going to love you. Oh, did anybody hear that up in here? I know you cheated, but I'm going to love you. I know you hurt me. I know, watch this, I know I hurt you. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to love you. Okay, let's, let's, let's situate this. Jesus on the cross, thorns on his head, stripes on his back, and he still said, love forgives. Hmm? And he said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend and he laid down his life because of love. God so loved the world that he gave right in the face of the people who crucified him. Jesus said, I forgive. And you say, well, well, OK, great. But well, well, tell us about the rest of the story. I'm glad you asked <laughs> that when God raised this same Jesus 
from the dead. That power of love secured the victory over death itself. Hmm? It didn't matter how many thorns they crushed. It didn't matter how many stripes he took. Love gave the victory over the ultimate death in Jesus. So I'm saying that to say to you that no matter what happened, if you look that person in the face and say, I love you with God's love. Victory will come. Peace will come. I need one little amen, one more. I heard one little oomph over there. But Love, God's love, is the supreme love. It's the greatest of all of the things and the power on the earth. I need to stop. I don't want to, but we're going to do some more as we go along the way. But I pray that you'll just get this point. That when you speak love into any situation, Love will bring victory in that situation. When you speak love in every situation, all things, every situation, love will bring victory in every situation. Last week's message was entitled, Will you do it for Jesus? Will you forgive for Jesus? Will you speak love and truth for Jesus? Will you let go of the fact that they lied, they cheated, they stole, they hurt me? Will you do that for Jesus? And still say, no matter what's going on, I love you. Let me invite you to stand up on your feet. I'm getting ready to do the teaching point. The teaching point says, the truth can be really good hurt. I don't know, was it a song? Say, ooh, this hurts so good, (laughs) or whatever. But the truth can be a good hurt because it will make us free. Hmm? And then the action point is, grow up (laughs) in order to go up. And I'm looping back to that point about how it's necessary for us to get to the level of maturity that God wants in us in order for his blessings to flow into our lives like he wants them to be. So my prayer over you, my my declaration over you is that we're growing. We're growing up. We're growing up in love. And as we grow up in love, we will grow up into blessings. And as we grow up into blessings, we'll be going up in peace, up in understanding, up in wisdom, up in joy. Oh, I like to be happy. I like to have fun. One day, a little while ago, my wife and I, we were talking about something. And we were just laughing so hard, hurting my stomach so hard, I couldn't even hardly stand up straight. And, you, and it's fun to be able to just laugh. Come on now. Just laugh. Just have some fun. Just let the joy of the Lord overtake our lives. And have peace. I've spoken about peace in several lessons and, 
and, and, and, and, and I pray and my desire is that we experience really the peace of God, especially that peace that passes understanding, knowing that he will be keeping our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So then, determination point. I'm encouraging you to take a walk in the goodness of the blessing. And the way to walk in the goodness of God's blessings is to walk in his love. To walk in his truth. I know it may be hard to get the words out of your mouth. You might have to clear your throat 42 times. <coughs> I love you. But as soon as you say it, because you've connected with God, when you speak the truth in love, freedom comes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let me share with you the gospel. The gospel is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16. And we're going to, con we're going to continue lessons like this and get more blessing to you. In the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16, there is the gospel. That's where it is. It tells us, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. While we were yet ungodly, while we were yet sinners, while we were acting a plum fool, Christ died for, Jesus died for us. Even while we were ugly, 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 he died. We lied, cheated, still people have killed. And yet Jesus died for them because of God's great love. So this is the love I want to introduce to you. This is the love I want you to come to the place in maturity that you will function in this kind of love. I didn't give you an opportunity to read it together. Let's read it together out loud. Ready? Read for God. Come on. Yes, that whosoever, yes, but have. Now this gospel is pointing us to salvation. Oh, what a wonderful way to live. And because God saved us through Jesus, in spite of ourselves, we can be happy, we can rejoice, we can be thankful that he saved us while we were a mess his same love can save others around us who are a mess <laughs> including husbands, wives, children co-workers, relatives God's love can save them in Jesus name let's read this verse together Romans chapter 10 verse 9 ready read The Lord Jesus and shall that what happened? What's going to happen? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord God. Let's have this prayer. Say this out loud. Say, God in heaven, thank you for today. I believe that your word is true. I receive your great love. I receive your salvation. I declare Jesus is your son. You loved me so much. You allowed him to die on the cross for me. He was buried in the grave. You raised him from the dead for me. I received Jesus as my savior, my master. And I make Jesus the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. I declare. I'm born, I'm born again. It's my desire, it's my desire to, walk to walk in your love in my life, in my life. and to see yes. freedom, freedom, peace, peace. And, your and your presence in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, God bless you. Thank you for watching Facebook Live. Share it on your page, if you will, so others may get an opportunity. Thank you for those who are calling in. And then check out our website, stc.church. You'll get connected with other social media sites. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to have a... Thank you for tuning in to the Salvation Temple broadcast. We'd like to invite you to our weekly services, Sunday mornings at 1045 a.m., and Wednesday evenings at 6.45 p.m. We look forward to seeing you at Salvation Temple Church, where the focus is on you.